Next question is from John Falbert. Why is pop culture so anti-red meat? <laughs> oh, I hate this. You know, there, this actually this goes way back to when uh, saturated fat and cholesterol became uh, demonized. Now, this was based off of really, really crappy. I think it was called the Seven Countries Study or whatever, where they actually omitted a few countries that didn't fit into this, you know, this narrative. But uh, this was when the our government took on this narrative that dietary cholesterol and saturated fat were the reason why we were seeing rising rates of heart disease. Now, of course, what has cholesterol and saturated fat? Red meat. So that's where it started, right? It started there. Um, by the way, it's all false. Um, in, in very small subsets of the population, they should watch their saturated fat intake. Dietary cholesterol, almost nobody needs to care about. Actually, doesn't really impact your cholesterol. There's a few, there's a very, again, small percentage of the population where this becomes a thing. But for most people, it's not an issue. Um, but that's where it started. Then it was the uh, red meat is bad for the environment. That's what we're hearing now, which, mm -hmm. you know, we, we I did a great podcast with uh, Rob Wolf where he talks about how it's way more complicated than that. It's not as, as simple as it seems. But it's total, It's it, this is total bullshit. If you have a balanced diet, red meat's one of the healthiest things you could eat for most people. It's got the nutrient density of red meat is so phenomenal. Okay. It's one of the only foods that you could eat by itself. Now, I don't recommend this. Okay. I'm not saying this is a good idea or this is a great diet, but it's one of the only foods you could eat by themselves always and eat nothing else. And you probably won't have a nutrient deficiency. You can't say that with any other food base at all, especially any plant food. So red meat, very, very, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with itself, especially if it's quality red meat, like grass-fed meat that we get that we talked well, about earlier. The pop culture thing, I think, has mostly to do with the environment, right? So we're talking about pop culture right now and why is it so popular to be uh, anti-red meat. I mean, you look at the documentaries that we took, Game Changers and What yeah. the Health, like that came out with this that made people think that if you are not eating meat, you're helping save the planet. And that's been a big movement for the last decade and a half. So I, that's why I think it's so mm -hmm. popular right now is that I know, because I have family like this. I've got a little niece and nephew that, you know, they're teens, 20s, and they all of a sudden switched to vegan out of nowhere, not for any health reasons whatsoever, but because they think they're saving the planet mm -hmm. by stopping eating red meat. And so that's become trendy and popular to do that. So it's not like, oh, I'm being healthier so much, which I think that was more so what you alluded to before like with cholesterol and mm -hmm. things like that and fat, I think it has more to do with like, I'm saving the earth. It's it's the Prius drivers. You know, I, yeah. bet, I bet you you look up something on that. I bet you like half the damn Prius drivers are also vegan well, because well, sure. they are saving the planet. Sure, right? Well, yeah, yeah, it's interesting bringing this up. I was talking to Courtney about this too. She's reading through Dr. Becky Campbell's book and I think she had a uh, an excerpt in there uh, from Chris Kresser and he, he actually like was talking about like the modern day hunter gatherers. And so there's still tribes out there that, you know, just live off of like what they hunt and, mm -hmm. and, and field and whatnot. And they outperformed and, and are superior, uh, on all health markers, uh, to people living in the industrialized world. And it, it's like measures like BMI, blood pressure, vision, bone density, cardiovascular function. And so it's like, you know, just to look at like how we've formed into all these, like dietary habits, you gotta you gotta put a lens on there and see if we're doing a good job or not. Yes, and when I say red meat, I'm talking about just meat, right? So you know, if somebody eats a lot of cheeseburgers, uh, then that's not good, right? The the meat itself might be okay, it might be not the greatest quality, but there's you know cheese in there, there's spreads, there's mayonnaise and stuff, there's bread that's in there, probably comes along with some French fries. I'm, when I say red meat, I mean just a red meat. I mean, in my experience, when I was working with clients, especially women who had issues with menstruation. So I'd, sometimes I would get clients who, women who'd over-dieted uh, or over-trained and they weren't getting their period and their hormones were all off. And I'd work with a functional medicine practitioner alongside one. One of the things that would be recommended always was to increase their red meat consumption. Good quality red meat, like you know steak or, or grass-fed you know, ground beef or whatever. And it would balance them out and they would feel amazing. Um, it's got a high concentration of creatine. Creatine's got some credible... Uh, health properties. Of course, the amino acid profile is amazing. It the fat, fatty acid, con, you know, content of red meat, especially grass-fed meat, red meat is good. Um, it's a very healthy thing to eat. But again, it's not processed meat. So I'm not talking about hot dogs right. or bologna, bologna or that kind of stuff. I'm talking about like steak, you know, or maybe good quality 
ground yeah. beef, grass fed, uh, grass finished. Yeah, there, there you're gonna have the the good quality. But you know, even the grain fed steak or ground beef is okay. It's not as good, but it's still yeah. okay. Right. But no, this crusade against red meat is is silly. And it's just, if they move from one thing to another, in my opinion, one of the reasons why pop culture is so anti just meat in general is because it's one of the foods that really can't be patented. Yep. You know, they can, they can produce GMO plants or they could produce fake meat products like Beyond Burger. Beyond Burger is patented. That's a patented formula. Yeah. I can't make that. Now, if I make, if I sell a steak, I'm a, you know, I have a, a farm or whatever, and I sell a steak. I can't patent my steak. Mm -hmm. Someone else. So it's a, it's there's a lot of money that is behind, you know, kind of with nefarious uh, intentions to demonize meat in general because it's not a patentable. This is my opinion, but mm -hmm. it's not a product that's patented, like, you know, like GMO soy or or corn or that kind of stuff. A vegan that drives a Hummer is better for the environment than someone who eats meat and drives a Prius. Is that what it says? That's, yeah, that's, oh, uh, that's like a famous article that went viral a couple of years ago. Dude. Well, you know, Rob Wolf said that um, that you know, in the farming, the animals in farming, yes. make up about three percent of all of the you know greenhouse gas emissions, and reducing and eliminating animal products would only cut that down by a half. Well, what tripped me out most about that conversation uh, in, in that uh, podcast was how he was talking about like desert areas and plains that used mm. to be grass and how they can actually like bring that back by introducing animals and, you know, and, and hunting and, you know, having this like ecosystem uh, rebuild itself. And it can actually then counter a lot of the carbon uh, emissions. Totally. And I mean, and, and then from a performance standpoint, I'll tell you what right now, uh, strength athletes from day one were advocates of eating uh, red meat. You, you notice a difference in your performance mm. and strength. So yeah, I'm, I I tell you, it was very few people that I'll have when I would train clients, and again, I would always work with nutrition experts, but very few people that we would tell to reduce their saturated fat intake or cholesterol intake um, who were otherwise eating healthy, right? Otherwise, it was like, all right, let's cut your sugar intake, let's cut your processed food intake. By the way, if you look at the obesity epidemic, they tried to pin it on fat, then they tried to pin it on sugar. The reality is it's heavily processed foods. It's it, the more processed foods we eat, the more obesity goes up and it just, it makes us overeat. And that's the problem. It's not meat.